It's Wednesday night, I'm quite certain. Yes, it's Wednesday night, but it feels like Monday night because we sort of weren't really here Monday night. We're kind of here, but it doesn't really matter. We're gonna have an amazing night. Don't go anywhere. All right, so here's what we're gonna do. I'm not starting with a cocktail. Let me take that back. I've already started with a cocktail. <laughs> but we're gonna do a little tofu thing uh, after to cook. And before all the meatheads in the audience are going, what the fuck, I'm not watching this show so the dude can make frickin' tofu. Ease up, big fella. Ease up, you're gonna like this. Do I look like the guys can eat something crappy? I don't eat crappy stuff but you have to prep it just a little bit. And so you go to the store and you buy a little one pound block. I like the firm. Somebody, quick. I like the firm. That's what she said. Kelly? Thank you, <laughs> God. How long does it take? And it comes with all this water and stuff in it that you don't want. And you don't want to drip it all over the damn floor. <laughs> Sorry about that. So all we're gonna do is we're gonna take a plate, put this down, a couple pieces of paper towel, uh, the tofu on top of that, a couple more. And I'm really kind of nervous because there's legitimate chefs here in the house right now. <laughs> and I know they're watching me going like this. Don't do that, don't do that, don't do that. And then I'm going to take a weight and I'm just going to stick away. This is what regular people do. I'm going to put a weight on it and I'm going to leave it for a half an hour or so. And in that half an hour, a bunch of the excess water is going to come out of it that we don't need. And then we'll cook it the way we're going to cook it. But just let me grab a piece of paper towel and clean this. There's tofu water all over the place back there, man. That's Isn't that what Lucky's for? It is. He even wa looked at it and walked away. <laughs> Who wants that shit? All right, let's start this. Because we got a lot going on today. It's uh, October 19th. Oh, God, it does. It feels good to be back in this chair again. Let me start first. Uh, we have a, a blogger here tonight, Mary from Foodies, uh, from food.theplainjane.com. Sitting over there. How are you, sweetheart? Good. How are you doing? Nice to see you. I like the look of your, uh, I like the look of the blog. I like the look of the food on there, and we're going to see it in a second. I think I took, look at, I got a chef back, two chefs back here making noise in my, in my kitchen. Ignore the people behind me. What was that line in The Wizard of Oz? Ignore the man behind the curtain, right? That's it. What's going on here? Oh, thank you. All right, can we take a look at, at Mary's uh, website? There it is, nice. And look at that, Kelly goes, look at on top of the first thing, she's got um, shrimp po' boys. And I love a shrimp po' po boy, and Kelly was making fun because I haven't made them in a long time. But those are from which food truck? Oh, Devilicious. From Devilicious. Are they as good as they look? Yes, they're really, really good. And of course they're deep fried, so who's not gonna like that, oh, right? Yeah. What, uh, tell me the best thing you've eaten in the past two weeks. Um, gosh, in the past two weeks. Quick, come on. Uh, I had some really good uh, dim sum today. Where? At uh, this place called Hong Kong Dim Sum in Mira Mesa. I don't know it. little like uh, barbecue pork tarts. They're really, really good. Sort of like uh, puff pastry kind of stuff? Yeah, kind of puff pastry with sweet, the uh, with some the one of my favorite inside. things. I know that's really bad for you. I just it's have this. It's really good, though. I have this sense that it's bad for you. Well, we're Thank happy you. to have you here. Thank you. Thank you. And, okay, I'll turn off my phone. Wow. I swear, I'll turn off my phone. And uh, we hope you write really nice stuff about us. I will. <laughs> he said. All right, watch this. Okay, we're a little discombobulated today because we got a lot going on, but we also have two chefs for what we were gonna call the round table and we decided to call the bitch table. We've asked uh, two chefs to come and tell us all the stuff that really bugs them about having a restaurant. And one of them, Paul said, well, what? Uh, Matt said, well, can that be, and it can be anything you want, man. Anything you want. From your side of the house, what stuff pisses you off the most? And we're gonna cover that, it'll be fun. But as we get close to that segment, if there's things that bother you about a restaurant, let me give you an example. And I know neither of these guys run their restaurants this way, but if you hate it when you sit down at a restaurant 
And the first thing the waiter says when he comes up is his name and that he'll be assisting you tonight. Hi, I'm Jeremy, and I'll be taking care of you tonight. You lovely. If that bothers you, send us that on Facebook and let us know. <laughs> we'll have these guys react to some of the things that bother you. Do you hate it when they bring out flavored waters? How about a salt of the day? <laughs> I don't like that. I don't like restaurants being overly pretentious. I don't. <laughs> salt of the day. I, here, I sat at a restaurant uh, not too long ago, and... Um, they brought out a, a water of the day and three different salts with the bread. Am I doing something wrong that I'm not normally salting my bread at home? <laughs> because I don't think I need right one salt, let alone three effing salts in front of me. Anyway, chef's bitch table coming up in a little bit. Uh, Are we allowed to ask questions back here? Yeah, of course, of course, <laughs> of course, you. of course, of course. <laughs> yes, and if you could... If you could uh, Specifically mention things you hate about either of these two guys' restaurants. <laughs> <laughs> and so be it. Where to begin? I was invited to the uh, Scripps uh, Hospital, Encinitas, um, their brain injury day treatment program about a month ago. And I did, I cooked and I talked for some of the, the day patients that are there. And they sent me just this, this thing that, they, that was in their... In their um, uh, Scripps newspaper, I guess, today that was super nice. And this really uh, a cool card. It's got pictures of a bunch of, a bunch of famous people with glasses that look just like me. I don't mean they look like me. I mean they look like me because they have glasses, right? And then inside it, it said uh, they've all made spectacles of themselves. Apparently I made a spectacle of myself that day. Anyway, I just want to say they were really sweet for doing this. And I think that with the Brain Injury Day Treatment Program, I think they brought me so the parents would watch, the patients would watch me and go, well, look at him. Maybe I'm not as bad as I thought I was. <laughs> He's not right. Anyway, that was very cool of them. Hey, so, as much as you. I love you, you forgot to introduce us back here. Wow, wow. how insecure are you? Jeez, come on. I know, it's been a while, sorry. In the Go back, ahead. in the back, uh, from right to left, uh, Sean the Mute, uh, Baby Yao, and uh, Max, my first seed, <laughs> working the controls. <laughs> I love how Everybody's he just embraced the we uh, missed baby you guys. Yow He does. Name. He's cool. Are you cool with the baby Yao, Lin? He has a real name. His, he, you're not. He's shaking his head. What would you like us to call you? <laughs> He's mute today. He is a mute today. Yeah, we've <laughs> stolen microphones and stuff to, <laughs> yeah, to hook up I'm these guys. sitting next to Lin the mute and Sean the mute. <laughs> uh, well, maybe we can come up with something better Okay. for that. I would like to, uh, can, we sh can we play Blake's uh, pictures? Yes, we can. So you may remember that I got called out by a guy on Facebook. He thought that I had stolen his vertical garden idea. The guy's name was Judd. He's a chef from somewhere. <laughs> you know that guy? I do. Yeah. So he, bitch, he bitched me out. He said, uh -oh. you know, how funny is it that I just, that after uh, Bob, Bob uh, from Ranch and Coast Magazine showing you something about me in his magazine that suddenly you have one in your backyard. And I wrote back and said it had nothing to do with you. And people started making jokes about him. And he made some comment about, oh, humor is one thing, but, you know, blah, blah, blah. And you, Anyway, he so his name is Judd. And we started using the term, don't be a Judd. He built himself a big, ugly hole. And then finally, he realized what a... Uh, what, uh, a Judd? A Judd he was being... <laughs> That we went to look at the stuff on Facebook and he had pulled it off. Disappeared. How embarrassing. He was so embarrassed over his actions. <laughs> he pulled it off of Facebook, but not before we had written down all his stupid words. Anyway, <laughs> we've now coined the phrase, don't be a Judd. And uh, Blake Pointe, a great fan, a great uh, fan, a uh, friend of the show, I mean, who takes the time to make these great posters. Uh, made not one, but what, 20 of them? He made a bunch, yeah. Let's have a look. Let's have a look at some of the good ones. See. <laughs> <laughs> oh, jeez. Right, it's going. complete with a picture of him in all his chef regalia. All right. You've, You've clearly, clearly seen, seen my Lenny Kravitz garden. Uh, obviously, a, uh, a nod to uh, Blue Steel, who looks a lot like Lenny Kravitz. <laughs> standing right here. Saw so a comment A6. Now your dog's name is Haley. Convenient. That is very funny. That is very funny. So is this actually him? Yeah. 
Is that the you guy's actual the picture? picture? Yeah, before it, it is. That was that was the picture that was on. If you went to his website, that's what's there. This poor guy. Sean the meat suspiciously repeats every single thing my plants say. <laughs> <laughs> so Blake admits that's what she said. Therefore, Kelly has no right to repeat it. <laughs> um, Blake admits to having multiple glasses of wine. If this is what he does. I got a case of wine for you, man. <laughs> yeah, Blake. A case. All right, before we get to the chefs and the bitch table, I'd like to, there's three quick videos I'd like to play. The first one, the Jewish cheesesteak one, Lynn, we don't have to play all of it. We'll just play it till the center part. But uh, Steve sent it to me today and he goes, something about your people. Something about, oh, this is your people? It's your people. It's my people, apparently. So we'll watch this one. This one, just a little bit. It's pretty good. Watch this. What are you wearing? Really? What? Really? I'm actually really excited today. Uh, we are going to make some cheesesteaks, being that I'm from Philadelphia. This is like... This is unbelievable. FatJewishGuy.com. Yep. So Why does he have like, Kira there in her in the Friday little top? To like stand in line for a $5 Why? No. Just no so, so guys will watch. How many times has that been watched? I can't see it. It was... The it, ingredients for cheesesteaks are simple. 50,000 times? Steak. If you skip to directly to the middle of this thing, you'll see you'll see this this. There you go, Obama's chocolate nuts, right? That's all that was. There was about ten seconds of the Obama's chocolate nuts. Can I start a website called SkinnyJewishGuy.com? <laughs> but Steve Steve understands why that very tiny top was on that woman directly in the center. Explain it. Well, it used to be by default the only image that would show up. Of your video, the they can't thumbnail. See you. Oh, come so over here. Well, the thumbnail of the of the video, yeah, was all only selected by YouTube as the very middle of the video. Right. So they strategically placed this picture of Obama, chocolate nuts. Obama's chocolate nuts in the center on a on a tight top, small top. Right. Girl. It's not the reason why I clicked on it. Just for the no, record. no, no. I understand that. I understand. <laughs> but that thing's not. Okay. To do with it. So here's the amazing thing, right? That's just a terrible effing video. Right. Apart from the girl in the top, which is just scandalous, right? It's a terrible video, right? And he's making a cheesesteak. Uh, you can't see anything that's so. There's no reason to watch it, right? Like fifty thousand views. Okay, go to this next one. Check this one. This one. Watch this. Just watch. Okay, this is a, play the whole thing. Ready? What? Watch. This is the entire video. Ready? That's it. That one's been watched six. Six, wait, wait, wait. So maybe stop it before the end next time. But that one has been watched like 650,000 times. It was 25 seconds of that chick sitting there. That's it? That's it. Yeah. Six seconds. Huck. Six seconds. Six seconds, I'm sorry. That's why it was so short. And it's been watched 600 plus thousand times. This next one. Be careful. What? No, no, no. That, well, it, it's fine. Just stop it before the end, guys, okay? <laughs> well, it was just that it was just that screen that you didn't like. Watch this next one, okay. Okay, just watch. It's very short. It's the dumbest thing I've ever seen in my life. Just wait. Oh my Okay, that was it. He goes, I know what I'm doing. No, you can play it. Play it. Oh, you don't want the end. Oh, you got the, you need the end. He's trying to What the hell? Okay, that was it. That was it, right? You saw the guy pretend to get fried? Right. Two million times that's been watched. Why was that selected? I have no idea. Hmm. <laughs> that's, a, that's the re most retarded thing I've ever seen. Oh, you can't say that anymore. No. That's Let's the most the ridiculous chefs. thing I've ever seen. Two plus million times? What the hell are you people doing out there? <laughs> Stop watching that shit. God. That's ridiculous. You know what's even dumber than that? The Guy Fieri stuff. We'll talk about that after. Oh, yeah. Let's bring in the chefs. All right. So, ladies and gentlemen, all the way from, from points west and north and south. and south. You can only be from one spot, though. We have sit, sitting down uh, right there on your left. Oh, sorry. On your right is Matt Gordon of Urban Solus in North Park, San Diego, downtown San Diego, essentially, for those of you who don't know. And his newest restaurant. 
Solace, 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 Solace at the Moonlight Lounge. Solace and the Moonlight Lounge. Jesus, it's a terrible name. <laughs> it's been there for a why, why couldn't you have just said... Don't piss them off. Uh, Urban Solace North. There. <laughs> take a mic. Take a mic. You can you can move towards you, and you can pull this little. Because bit Solace in the Moonlight Lounge is cooler. You're cooler. I am. No, he's cooler. <laughs> and and Paul McCabe uh, from the from the coast uh, from Lauberge uh, Kitchen, fifteen forty. Yep. Oh, I right. love both your restaurants. You got that I'm name well. right, huh? Yeah, I did. That one's simple. Remind why, me why never to called, piss you off, by the way. Why is it <laughs> never. called Kitchen fifteen forty? Hey, know, wait. You know the reason? And this one. <laughs> Wait a second. Are it's you, super creative, by the way. Do you get pissed off at those other guys, Kitchen 1450? What is I it? I gotta tell you, can I go off about that? Yeah, wait, what's, yeah. What's, what's their real name? 5140. No, the other one. Kitchen 4140. Okay, so, so Paul's is Kitchen 1540. Which was first. Which was first, way first. Oh, yeah. Even and they're, the and they're Kitchen 4140? Yes. Why did they do that? Why would they do that? I don't know, but apparently they're gonna shut down and rename it from what I hear. It just pissed me off. I couldn't believe it. And then every time you see Kitchen 15, well, we got mixed up. We were supposed to do this barbecue galore fish taco battle. Yeah. We weren't supposed to be in it. It was 4140. Right. But they put us in it because it was confusing. Did I, you end up I, going? I think he's riding coattails, to be honest with you. Of course. I'm going to open a restaurant up in Encinitas. So I'm going to call it Soulmates at the Moonlight Lounge. <laughs> <laughs> and I bet you I'll get some of your, your leftover business. Okay. You can have them. There's enough. All right, but we're not supposed to talk about that stuff tonight. Here's what I want to talk about. I want to talk about, as chef, well, I, we, look, we sit around with our friends all the time and we bitch about things that we hate about restaurants. And whether it's the server that introduces himself or, or bad service or expensive this or that or whatever it is, or not good napkins, it doesn't matter. We gripe on our side. And I was wondering last week, I bet you guys do too. I'm curious to know some of the things that you, when you get together with your little chefy groups and you're sitting around and your your toque and your clogs and your white special jackets with your yeah. names and your pens and your <laughs> thermometers in the arm yeah all those things <laughs> <laughs> what do you guys talk about not work usually not work no no but i want to know like this you know what piss you know what happened the other night in the restaurant that really pissed me off somebody finished that sentence i hate it when people say I know the chef, and, and he requested a cabana for me. I hate that. Everybody oh. says they know me. Everybody. And I don't. They and, do it all the time, and that, that pisses me off. And, and how, do, how do your people deal with that? They usually come and say, chef, there's somebody up here, and they say they know you. And I'm like, will you stop believing them? Stop. I don't know them. I, I got don't. It. You know, huh? I tried to get a table there last week, and they turned me away. <laughs> yeah, well, I, there's a reason for that. Because you didn't say that? <laughs> no, I said that. And they're like, no, he doesn't know you. Shut up. You've never even been in. That pisses me off. <laughs> you know what? I uh, had a conversation with um, Brian Malarkey once and uh, said I was going to go down to his place and they were full. And he goes, did you say who you were? And I said, no, I, I, I couldn't do that. He goes, you should say it. I, go, I feel like a douche saying that. Uh, we're full. Oh, um, well, this is Sam the cooking guy. Okay, we're still full. <laughs> yeah. What do you want me to do about it? We're full. Yeah. Yeah. The other thing I hate is calamari. Fried where, did calamari. That, where did that come from? I hate fried calamari because somebody's trying to get me to put it on my menu right now and I just won't do it. I hate it. Well, somebody in your kitchen? Um, maybe above me, but I hate fried calamari. Yeah, how difficult is that part? How difficult is... is but you're in a hotel. Yeah. You're at the Low Bears in Del Mar. Yep. So there's going to be those people that are above you that are going to want to say... You know, we had fried calamari at whatever, and it was really good. We <laughs> should have fried calamari. Probably went just like that. It happens. Right. It happens all the time, and I, I got to pick my battles. Some of them, some of them, I'll fight for and win. And, and can you tell me what's on your menu right now that you don't want to have on your menu because somebody suggested it, and it was a battle you chose not to pick? <laughs> oh, wow! Well, you're calling me out, aren't you? There's going to be something, right? <laughs> yeah. What is it? Filet mignon. Filet mignon. I don't. You can get filet anywhere. And I don't think it fits on our menu. It's an interesting don't. point. I just don't. There's so many other cooler cuts of meat out there. Like we serve pigtail. Yeah. We sell them all day long, all day. And the filet is just safe. For people that don't know, pigtail is pigtail? It's pigtail. <laughs> did did it's I the, just it's point at myself? You did. You did. It's the tail of the pig. I'm not embarrassed to ask when I don't know something. You had it. I had pigtail? Yeah, that night you came in. I don't think we had pigtail. Oh, no. Here's the thing, oh, Kelly. Oh, you had pigtail. 
No, yeah. no, no. At the white flag? Yeah. Are you sure? I'm pretty sure. You were home laying on your floor because your back hurt. What do you know? Hey, John, text me right now, dude. Did he have pigtail that night? I'm pretty sure you did. I don't think I had pigtail. Because you know why I don't think I had pigtail? Because uh, Kelly and Jill ate everything. And Kelly and Jill wouldn't. Well, Jill might eat pigtail, but I know Kelly no. would not eat pigtail. You sure? Pretty sure, but we'll find All out. Right. All right. We'll find out. Um, yes, I just got confirmation from the person that was there cooking for you. Yes, sir. You ate pigtail. How was it, Kel? <laughs> does it look like pigtail? Yeah, how does it No, how does it, it doesn't look like pigtail. It looks like um, a cylinder because we use transglutaminase to glue it back together and reform it. Um, and it's a cylinder that's crispy with barbecue sauce with uh, cornbread puree, coleslaw, and uh, potato salad. I remember the cornbread puree. That's it. You had pigtail, dude. I had pigtail. Kelly had pigtail. You fucking loved it. I did fucking love it. You fucking it. loved it. Yeah. It was really good. <laughs> All right. She's but we're straying. We're straying. Now we're getting onto things that we like as opposed Sorry. to things that we hate. My bad. Uh, Chef um, Gordon. Matt. Matt. What do I okay. hate? Um, what do you hate? You know, what number one on your list? Well, that's a big list. It's hard to actually pick the first one. I, I think uh, I don't mind when people want to modify food or, or you know, uh, oh. change things around a little bit. Yeah, but, yeah. But there's a there's a point in time where it just becomes like, why do you bother going out to eat at all? And when you have 40 tickets hanging up and 150 people sitting in a restaurant and someone yeah. wants you to like recreate a menu for them on the spot of something that is simplification and not really what you intended to serve in the first place, yeah. it's, it sucks. I, yeah, I have this theory that when you go out, um, you should, if it's a good restaurant, you should take something the way the chef intended it and at least try it that time by itself, yeah. the, way, the way he wanted you to have it. When you start jacking with it, you're, you're, you're messing with, you know, potentially something that's really great. And we don't know, as civilians, most civilians don't really know how something is, how some flavor or some of the addition of something is going to benefit the whole dish. And you take right. that one thing out that you go, oh, I don't like cherries, leave that shit off. You're playing with the whole thing that in a way you shouldn't. You are. And I mean, just to expand on that, I mean, allergies, celiac, <clears throat> you know, Gluten allergies, that's a separate issue. Right. We always accommodate that, and that doesn't pose a problem. Tell me this. The, the gluten people are a pain in the ass for you guys, right? No. They're no. Not? Actually, we, we don't cook with much flour. Or I was only anyway. kidding. <laughs> you, you wanted to say, yeah. I just wanted to hear somebody go, yeah, you're right, finally. No, it's the fucking vegans. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> I'm kidding. Um, uh, but one time, I got so upset by that. We were super busy. Um, I actually had a server take out a crayon and a blank piece of paper to show us how to, how to present it to you. That's how pissed off I was. Like I mean, that, that really bothered dish. me. Yeah, draw, wow. it, draw it for me, and, and we'll make wow, it what you that's, want. Wow, that's really nice. I like that. Yeah, it was kind of bad. I got Yeah, trouble, that's but, kind of bad. Yeah. I had experience in the dining room. Uh, I've spent a lot of time on the floor now sort of managing the dining room, and I, I had, was asked to go to a table to greet a guest who was not real happy about a dish that she had. Yeah. And <laughs> How often does that happen? Uh, not that often, okay. fortunately. It happens. But, you know, for me, service is, is sort of the penultimate goal of the restaurant, and food is part of the you know decor it's got to be great but what we do in interaction with the guests is is better you know than anything yeah and you walk out i walk out and and the server sort of prompted me that the lady had requested it her dish be a filet of salmon and then she had been served our wild sockeye salmon dish and was upset that it wasn't a filet of salmon i was kind of confused about what it would be so i walked to the table and there's this um obviously fairly well off couple uh, right later in age in life yeah. and uh they're old the table and i said just say I, old man you okay. can say they're old yeah an old lady and uh, heavily modified at the same time you know uh, <laughs> <laughs> what are you talking about makeup or plastic surgery i uh, not makeup and uh <laughs> so i said i understand you have a problem uh, i understand you're not happy with your dish and i said what 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 can i do for you and she said well i, I was very explicit about wanting a fillet of salmon <laughs> <laughs> i'm thinking does she want the whole fish <laughs> what is this and um i said i actually I mean, that is a filet of salmon on the plate there what were you expecting and she said well i wanted this really thick one inch piece of fish i said oh, well this is wild sockeye salmon from you know bristol bay alaska you know, sustainable fishery and it's not a very big fish so that's actually about a third of a filet right there she said what well, didn't say sockeye salmon on your menu and i said what was you hoping for she said i wanted atlantic salmon. oh, oh no. yes the <laughs> no. pre the, the, with the extra orange color added that's how i said ah we don't serve you know, farm-raised salmon here. And she said, oh, don't you tell me that. 
And I was like, excuse me? She goes, go away. She said, go away? She said, go away. And I said, well, well, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm not sure what you were hoping for. She said, when I go out to eat, I expect a big, thick piece of fish. I said, well, this whole fish is about two pounds, and the filet, you know, it's this right. big, and you have a third of it right there. And she said, I wanted Atlantic salmon. And I said, well, the reason that filet is a one-inch thick is because they feed it all kinds of hormones in the food and food yeah. coloring to make it orange. And she said, go away! <laughs> Yelled at me. Did you go away? I did. I just said, all right. Did they pay? Yeah, I wanted to kick him out, but. <laughs> See, this is, this, yeah. You hear Kelly? Kelly goes, it might have been my mother. <laughs> right? I didn't want to say anything. Elderly no, woman. It wasn't you. Not, not, uh, she's not enhanced uh, mechanically, though. No, is wasn't. she? I'm Katie. Mechanically. <laughs> you know what I mean. I think, um, it, for me, there's a lot of little things that we could say that piss me off. You know, people changing this or, you know, requesting certain things. But I think the core reality comes down to, especially owning a restaurant, People not really understanding the effort that goes into what we do. And yeah, you know what? We fuck yeah. up. We're human beings. We're going to make mistakes. We're going to serve something undercooked, overcooked, cold, whatever you want to say. But what we put into making a machine like that work yeah. and the just sort of like, you wanted Atlantic salmon. Okay. Like, Somebody that? orders a piece of, st uh, orders a steak, medium rare, and it comes back because it's not their medium rare. Or not. Does that piss you off? You know, we actually put on our menu what our medium rare is. Yeah. So at least when it does come back, we can say, well, you know, yeah. we say to the cook who we're handing it back to, you did it right, just do it more. Yeah. Do it more. There's a new thing that's that started that just pisses me off, and I don't know who started it. I'd like to find out. It's mid-rare plus or <laughs> medium minus. What the fuck does that mean? Shut up. I Somebody actually I said medium God. minus? Yes, and mid-rare plus. What is that? You can't create new temperatures. It's mid rare, medium, <laughs> mid well, and well. You can't. And but they're doing it. Have you seen it? No. Oh well, it's. I would it's, refuse it's to cook place. that. We don't know what to do at that point. Well, I tell you plus. what. If you take if you take uh, fillet off your menu, you you'll get rid of a lot of those problems. But you'll be doing other things that are still gonna. Always, wow. Always. Wow. Yeah. What's the number one. number one problem dish in the restaurant? For both of you, for each of your restaurants, I think steaks because steaks? we, I think we, we serve to what I think is a true temperature, right. and we try to define that on the menu. But people send it back a lot; they want them. We circulate. We, we circulate most of our meat, so that's pretty consistent. Um, I think our. What does that mean? Uh, sous vide. Most of. Our I got it. okay. Sous vide, I understand. Circulated, I got it. I got My it. Bad. No, no, um, no, it's okay. The number, the, the the hardest dish I think people to get is our sweetbread dish. Yeah. Sweetbreads is, is kind of difficult. For Spectacular, by the way. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. But yeah. the, the cuttlefish and the cross between the ocean and the land, I think that, yeah. that dish is, it's, it's maybe a little too far-fetched for some people, which is frustrating. Have you had to throw people out? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Are you kidding me? Especially during track season? All the time. And you have to, you have to throw them out before they, have you had to throw them out and they haven't paid yet and then you've got that, they're getting thrown out and they then don't want to pay? Yes. How difficult is that? That's difficult. That's really difficult to get their money. And hopefully somebody that's with them is sane enough to, yeah. to be able to pay for the bill. But that, that gets tough when they're drunk and belligerent. And during track season, it's the uh, worst for us. Yes, yeah, same. Uh, You've just, thrown people in, you out. Know, in North Park about three years ago, we had someone get a little uh, you know, un inappropriate with the server with their verbiage, and we asked them to leave. But they paid, which yeah. was nice. <laughs> Actually, it's the only one We'd like one you to time, pay, so. and we're going to kick you out now. <laughs> Yeah, right. And, yeah, and sometimes this this one time and during track this last year, this guy was obviously super wealthy, but he had two huge guys with him that weren't drunk, and he was belligerent. I mean, they were like bodyguards, huge, and they were messing with other tables, picking fights, and these two guys were not drunk, and they were Jeez. fucking huge. Yeah, they were huge. So we had to get security. So who are you talking to? Are you looking at the sober two guys, or are you looking at the drunk going, you got to take care of your bill? We're trying to talk to the sober two guys to yeah. get, get them to be on board with us to get this guy to calm down, pay the bill, and get out. Get out. But people, they didn't want to. People ask for free shit all the time? Oh, man. I've, oh. oh, hit a nerve? Oh, you hit a, <laughs> oh, I forgot about this one. How does that go down? Cause I, I got this one guy. I got to learn this trick. <laughs> I don't know how to deal with it, to be honest with you. Yeah. I just feed into it. He's, he's winning, and it pisses me off. But so he, he sits down. He's a multimillionaire, right? right? right. Old guy, Rancho Santa Fe. Because he's getting free shit everywhere, right? Yeah, <laughs> exactly. that's Probably. it. That's it. All right? And ever since he first came in to Kitchen 1540, he, he was at Star of the Sea with me, Top of the Cove. He's just yep. been following. Name and, dropper. And um, <laughs> <laughs> I worked at El Pollo Loco. <laughs> 
And I gave him a free meat and cheese, right? The charcuterie. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. Every time he comes in, he expects it. And if it doesn't happen, how does he ask for it? You got to give me this meat and cheese. Paul always gives it to me. Go ask him. Call him. Tell him. He'll, he'll tell you. We get it for free every time. If I don't get it, I'm leaving. Are you kidding Come me? Come on. Are you kidding me? We're doing something wrong, Kelly. <laughs> and he gets it every time. Here's going to be my line. Paul said he'd give me the entire white flag. <laughs> well, if you're going to do to me what you did to Judd, I'll give you the fucking white flag. <laughs> that was pretty ballsy, man. That's a big deal you did there. That's funny. Hey, come on. He, you know what? It. I love it. I don't like that. I don't like being accused. He had no idea what he was talking about. I didn't know he invented the vertical garden, though. Thank you. Apparently, he did. Well, look on my wall. He put something on mine about that, too. He did? Because you know we have the vertical garden. I have one in my backyard. I know. Because you have one in your backyard. Well, your restaurant backyard. Yeah. Yeah. But Shit. He, he said something to me, too. I thought that was pretty funny. Well, somebody has to call him up. <laughs> it's good stuff. Yeah. So that's it. You don't hate anything else? I hate all kinds of shit. <laughs> cool. I know. Just name three things. Top three things now. Just name me three things that you, that all, you hate. Well, I, I hate the fact that there's actually only like five personality types in the like staff of a restaurant. And, you know, 24 years in, I'm working with the same people I've worked with yeah. for 24 years. It's just different. They have different They're names. just different faces. Yeah. yeah. Right. Um, you know, it's when we dedicate what we dedicate to a business like this, and you know, I've just opened a new restaurant. I'm working 107 hours a week. Right. You know, one day off since July, and we want to provide the right environment for people. We want to, you know, give them a great product to sell if they're a server, yeah. the right tools to work with as a cook. And then, when <laughs> when someone doesn't give back that, you know, the effort into it, it's just it's it gonna get, be it tough, man. Demoralizing for sure. Yeah, you told me once you were an asshole to work for, and I've. <laughs> I, I think I heard that that's true. Have you heard that's true? I've I have. heard that's true. I, I've heard it. Well, here's I've what I've heard. heard. Here's what I've heard. Tell me, I want to know what you. You're I a prick. <laughs> I've heard. The, I've heard your recruiting, your hiring process, is oh, yeah. crazy. Yeah, Did yeah. I share that an article with you about the the team interviews, the group interview stuff? Do you do that? No. He does a group interview thing. Only for front of the house. Front of the house. Which well, here's here's here's, everybody, everybody buys in here's how it was. Everybody buys it. Here's how it was explained to me. Ten people at a time. He they'll take yeah, ten oh. people applying for jobs. And I don't know if it's you or you and young me, uh, his wife that uh, runs part of the restaurant. Too. They sit down, they've got clipboards, and the people have their applications on clipboards or something. And they say like this, um, where's this wine from? How do you make a Negroni? What happens if a customer does this? What if they want to send that back? What if they want medium <laughs> rare minus? What do you do? They just like fire questions. Boom, 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 boom. Wow. I think you make people pee right there in their chairs. <laughs> For sure. For sure. Yeah. No, that's how we do it. No. I just um, read an interesting article um, about how that's a very effective, a very effective tool. So yeah. there's a couple well. things there. One is we give very explicit instructions in the you know the ad or the call for interview that says you know bring these things with you. Right. And the first step, extra pair of pants. No. <laughs> <laughs> you know, two resumes and a pen. It's really simple shit, right? Right. So you get ten people to the table. You say, all right, hand me one of your resumes and turn the other one over. Yeah. And invariably at least three of those people don't have the second resume so now now they have no no ability to like answer the 10 questions but you've just eliminated 30 percent that yes. are idiots that probably shouldn't be there in the first right. place right that's a good point exactly. that's a good test good right off the bat yeah, yeah. and then yeah. you know we've hired people who have who have failed to answer a lot of questions on there but it's for us a way to gauge people's knowledge yeah. and if you don't know what an appellation is or can't name you know five hmm. varietals of wine or, you know, what's arugula? Then we, reali <laughs> we realize what, something very specific about ourselves. And that's yeah. that we don't have a month to train you in what we do. So you have to have some good. I like that's his style. Smart, yeah. yeah, he's an asshole, but I like his style. <laughs> <laughs> the asshole part comes after you started working for me. It's not the interview thing. Not before. I have a question from Facebook for the chefs. Yeah. So one of our viewers, Sarah Hess, Sean, you can pull up my computer. Uh, Sarah Hess says she had problems with um, getting recommendations from the waiters. And so she wants to know if the waiters ever push certain entrees at the request of the chefs so you can get rid of ingredients. I, I don't, I think people do that. Absolutely. I don't think, you know, we don't do that. I'm sure Paul doesn't do that. Nope. Generally, we will, uh, you know, focus on things that we want people to try, whether it's a newer dish or things that i mean to be honest if there's something that's got a higher profit margin we yeah. might say go for that because it's been a rough week or something anthony but bourdain kitchen confidential you order 50 pounds of sea bass you've got f five pounds left that are going bad tomorrow you need to sell them tonight does it suddenly become a special not for me not my kitchen okay no 
<clears throat> no. I don't, you know, I'm, I'm not sure about you, but we don't really run specials. And yeah. A, no, part of that either. reason is I don't, I don't like to use it as a sort of catch-all. I'm glad. Gap. I'm glad I don't like specials. If we do, it's because we're developing a new menu item. Right, not right, right, we're getting right. rid of something. Yeah, that's the only time <clears throat> that we run specials, if you will, is just to test the market and see what people want and what will sell. Uh, try a new dish out. But sure. That's, that's the only time. By the way, that trout that you were trying that one time in North Park, do you remember that? Mm -hmm. Did that ever make it to the menu? It did, yeah. I really liked it. That cornmeal crust. Yeah, it trout. was really delicious. Yeah, it was It was on really for a while. delicious. All right, well, you guys are awesome. Thank you. I, I like this. Um, that's it. We could talk for like four hours. No, <laughs> I know you could. You know what? It's interesting. I, you know, I think the answer for people um, who don't want sh to have problems when they go out is go to a decent place. And I know you can't always afford to do that and you don't always want to do that. I, it, for me, it's relatively simple. I say, don't go to a restaurant and expect something that they're absolutely incapable of making. Mm -hmm. I'm not going to go to you know, Larry's house of, of grits and ribs and expect to have a, 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 a beautiful piece of foie gras because it's just not going to happen. You want to talk about foie gras? Yeah, you got an issue mm. with that? No, I'm okay eating it. Are you? I'm fine. Absolutely, I love it. But I know you, your restaurants had a mesh, an, an issue. <clears throat> We've had a, a huge issue where PETA forced us to take it off the menu. Right. So for people that don't know, a foie gras is uh, goose or duck liver. That uh, has, The goose or the ducks have been intentionally fattened up to enlarge the liver. There's a school of thought that says it's a, it's a mean way to, to treat an animal. And then the PETA guys pick at restaurants. They do. Or they call you, you said once, right? They call, they pick it. Right. Um, they throw out brochures and they, they right. threaten to pick it. And that's a kind of a big deal. I served all the time. No one's ever been outside Never? my door. I love it. Wow. <laughs> it's back on our <laughs> menu. Right? Under the radar. It should be. I'm glad it is. It's back you know what? Menu. Kelly's brother-in-law and my, and my brother-in-law used to be in the fur business. Actual <laughs> real fur coat wow. business back in the day. He got a lot of shit from people. He eventually got out of it. He think he's he saw the writing on the wall. Do you know how we learned? It was written in blood, actually. I think <laughs> in those days, we learned to make foie gras because the geese and ducks do that to themselves every year before they go fly away for the winter. They, they gorge eat, up, eat, mm -hmm. eat, eat. So their liver gets huge. It's their fuel tank. They fill it up, and someone killed one of those. You know. 800 years ago, I said, holy crap. Well, this is really good. By the way, my little dog would do that if I put out enough food. <laughs> he would gorge himself. You could have Chinese crested liver that probably wouldn't be, you know, anywhere near as delicious as the duck. But, yeah, you never know. <laughs> but it's interesting that they do that. Yeah. I hear there's a guy in France that does not force feed. He just absolutely puts out tons of feed and just lets them eat all they want. They do it to themselves. Do you know they? What? Yeah. Have you heard about that? Yeah, the, uh, it's a French guy. Dan Daniel Barber did a little blurb on him on yeah. TEDx or something um, you know their, their, their windpipe and their like stomach yeah different place it's not like us where they put something down your throat and you can't breathe they while they're forcing the food in wow well it's, it's a different yeah. like hole opening in their mouth and they like breathe through their tongue and they eat through their throat and Breathe through their tongue. Yeah, they have a little hole. Okay, in it's going to get gross now, and I'm not going to want to. <laughs> I'm not going to want to go to the breathe through they the can tongue breathe thing. While they're I don't understand that. Yeah. All right, so chefs, thank you. Thank you. Uh, thank you. I appreciate you guys taking the time out of your day. And you know what? People don't realize the work that goes in, the effort that goes in, the hours that go in to the to thinking up this stuff and creating a restaurant that has great food and uh, and even better service. People should remember this: if the food sucks, don't take it out on the servers. Yeah. Uh, take it out on the servers if the servers suck, though. That's right. And do you want people coming up to you or a general manager if they've had a terrible experience yes. with a server and telling you? Yes. Yes. But You say yes. Are you saying yes? I'm saying yes. Yeah, absolutely. You should. Of course. If you don't say anything, you guys are never going to know. Never. I, you know what? That would be the thing I hate the most is someone who walks out of the restaurant and goes to Chow Hunt or Yelp oh, or Yelp. some other oh, website right. yeah. and says, I had a horrible meal there. This was cold or that was fast yep. or the server Kelly's was got slow, a point. But they never walked in and said something about it. I have something to say. Yeah. I'm still really pissed off about the pigs. <laughs> <laughs> you like and the pigtails. going down for that. Can, can we just spend a minute? Mm -hmm. <laughs> oh. Let's bring that up. How do we feel about Yelp? All right. I, I, so I everybody it, knows I Yelp, Yelp is a is a community website intended to help people uh, voice their opinions uh, and feelings and experiences about all manner of business, not just restaurants, mm. all kinds of things. Except, and they somehow they have an algorithm, presumably that helps flush out. 
The restaurant across the street ass wipe who goes on and says, oh, I had the chicken livers there and there's the worst crap I ever put yeah. in the mouth. And there was a rat in, in the salt shaker and the, I saw the <laughs> chefs having sex in the prep kitchen. <laughs> you read that one? Yeah, I read that one. So they uh, claim they figured out how to keep that bullshit out. And oh. it's just honest legitimate regular no, people nope it's not we had wow. a disgruntled manager leave yeah and then all of a sudden uh we had several bad reviews yeah and then i went to see where they were yeah knew that they were friends with this guy yeah and where no he way. moved to all yeah. of a sudden they got five star reviews <sighs> i mean it is so blatantly obvious that it's 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 bullshit man yeah it I, is bullshit there's a couple that are great you know and there are reviewers out there and there's not everybody's in that same boat but they have not figured out how to filter those people out is there any system out there that uh you dig you tell people to use i like gaio yeah i like gaio open table for us is really yeah. good yeah. And honest more serious diners although i think you know for a restaurant like ours where it is a little more casual vibe sometimes the open table diners are a little underwhelmed by what their expectation yeah. is but yeah, uh how is zagat how do you say it? Nobody knows, how, nobody knows how to say it. By the way, comment about to Gaio. Shouldn't they change the way they spell their name so it doesn't look like Gaio? Yeah, for sure, but that's French. It's G A Y O H. What is it? T. T. G A Y O T. It's still gay. Whatever it is. Gaio. Not that there's anything wrong with that, but really. have that video queued up? Yes. I'll do it again for you. One more time. Gaio. Thank you. Yeah. I hate Yelp. I do too. I, I think probably, I, I don't I do. think I've ever ran into a chef that uh, that digs it. That is so interesting that it can exist and you know. But Steve can't stand it. When I go to a, and Steve, I, I go Steve, on there and attack people. Steve will call people out. He will attack people because they've written a review based on like the color of the napkins. See, they give they give a restaurant. Yep. They'll give them a one. See, yep. on there. That's not right. You can't give them a one for their napkins. I read but, one, because my mom's from Ethiopia, so I was looking for Ethiopian restaurants. Mm -hmm. And the lady said, in the middle of the review, dissing it all the way through, and then in the middle I said, I hate Ethiopian food to begin with. <laughs> like, why are you going there? And let yeah. alone putting a one star review. Unbelievable. Yeah. But it's amazing how many people find our restaurants from Yelp. So when, it does you know, when, have I, when I go to a new there. restaurant, so, I look at Yelp. You suck. I do. See? You suck. So you then it's not. then it's up to you guys. <laughs> I, I look at it with an educated eye because I know what I'm, you know, filtering out on my own. But. Do do yeah. do you guys mind when uh, or do or do your staff uh, host people mind when um, civilians ask to not be say, go to the table. Here's a table for you and I go, "Can I go sit over there?" Like you did the other night? Yeah. yeah. Sorry. <laughs> you hate that? Sometimes. It was Kelly did that. Thanks, Kelly. Kelly wanted to move. Everybody kept telling me I want to sit upstairs. Okay, don't say that out loud. Never mind. Sa Sam. <laughs> Sam and Kelly, I have no issue with it. You can sit wherever you want. Thank you. Thank you. Anyway. Because sometimes you don't want a... Uh, uh, you know, and I know two people going in should probably get a two-top. They probably shouldn't be sitting at a four. But sometimes you just want that little sure. space. And I know it Fs up who, how many people you're... You're trying to run a business, so... For I me, get it. For me, sort of, sort of like with the food, being a restaurant owner, it's the experience is the most important part. And again, I love, I love food. I'm a chef, and I've created the menus. But that's not why they're there. They're right. there to have an experience, and food's mm -hmm. a big part of it. So, you know, we really do try to accommodate people as best we can because we want them to leave going, wow, they really went out of their way to take care of us. Right. Yeah. See, I mean, I, uh, yeah, I have never eaten at either of your places and walked out feeling anything but that. So. Well, uh, if, I can, if I can pimp them guy. both. Uh, no, it's not because I'm Sam the cooking guy. Is it? Yeah. Kind <laughs> <of>. <laughs> <laughs> I thought it was my sparkling personality, and it was just a nice guy. Uh, so if you, can go to, if you can go to Matt's places, Urban Solace in North Park on 30th, uh, or Solace and the Moolight Lounge uh, in Encinitas on uh, 1. What do, what do you call that? Coast Highway? We're on E Street. One, between, e Street. E Street, e Street and 1 or something. Yeah. yeah. And uh, uh, Paul McCabe at Kitchen 1540 at Lauberge, which is a stone's throw from the ocean, right across the street from the Del Mar Plaza. Go there, hang out, have food. And don't do anything. That is, sitting at the, is sitting at the bar... Uh, how did I want to say this? You're fine. People sit at the bar and just do have everything, whatever. Those There's the no best, best seats in the house. That's sure. what I think. For sure. Yeah, you know, yeah, we yeah. have that little wine bar. You do have that little wine that bar. That looks right into the kitchen. Yeah. It's a great spot. It's a great spot. Yeah. 
sit there and order whatever you want. I think if I built a restaurant, I would like to build nothing but counter. I love that. Yeah, yeah. People love it. I love that. And by the way, the burger place the counter is barely counter. <laughs> is it? Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's there. barely counter. Why do you call it the counter? Because it's what they the call it. Going. They've named it the counter. Check. They have a bar. They don't really have a counter. One burger, two burgers. That's what it is? Yeah, yeah, You're selling yeah. that many burgers? Uh-huh. All right, you guys are awesome. Cool. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Uh, we'll see you again, maybe? For yeah. sure. Maybe. Maybe we'll have some Somewhere. interesting one day, new stuff we can all talk about together. We never like know. that. We Ch- like that. You never changes know. are always happening. Changes are good, right? Yep. Okay. Change is good. I've changes said that. Good. Kelly and I have had lots of changes in our life. Nice. I Thanks. was going to make some joke, but I can't even think of it. <laughs> all right, so here's what I have to do now. Uh, I now need to hear that. You just got applause. Like a, like, 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 like Lady Gaga applause. Oh my God. Thank you. All right. Uh, now I've promised tofu. I'm not going to disappoint. And Max, while we're doing the tofu, can we talk a Guy Fieri nonsense? Yes. I would love to do that. All right. Ready? Meet me in the kitchen. Ready? Go. Yeah. All right, so here's what happens. After it's been, what, oh, 45 minutes, 50 minutes, longer than I was going to. Here's what you've got. You've got this beautiful, now mostly dry block of tofu. And I'm just gonna dry it a tiny bit more because I, like I don't like to cook it and have it be, have it be uh, moist. So this is done, this is done, this goes over here. Uh, and now I'm gonna start my pan. Come on, on high. This is a very, very simple process. Watch what I'm going to do with this. I could cook it thick like this. I could cut it into pieces. But what I like to do is I like to take it and make it a little bit smaller. So I'm going to cut it straight down this way and give two like one inch chunks. Like that, right? It's perfect. And now, um, Watch this. I don't know where my stuff is. Oh, I'm over here. What a surprise. I'm over here. No, no, no. Sorry, I mean, I'm trying to talk to Max. Oh, give, me, give me shit all the time. <laughs> Why do I always have to get shit? So I'm going to use two things. I'm going to use a little sesame oil and a little chili oil on these things. And nothing else for now, right? This is it. And these guys are going to go face down. I'm going to put the same on the other side because I'm going to cook both sides. But what I'm going to do this, um, uh, I, I put this on um, Facebook the other day. I had this, I think I had this Monday night, and I put it on Facebook, and a lot of people commented. A lot of people said it looked awesome. A lot of people kind of thought, nah, tofu, how good could tofu be? And I have to admit, I used to be one of those people. But that was back in the dark ages when I was also one of those people that didn't dig cilantro at all. And now, I've learned the air of my ways. I was a fool then, <laughs> and I love cilantro. So the key to this whole thing is just get your pan really hot. Uh, Wait, hold on. Let me just add. People yeah. didn't just think that it was not a good idea. They were like viscerally against it. Why? Why would people hate on the tofu? I don't know. People hate on tofu. Yeah, I mean, I think, you know what? Here's what I like about it. I like that it's full of protein. I'm not trying to get all... Um, earthy? All earthy and, and healthy. I'm not trying to... It's not discovery health here. <laughs> Steve and I, when we shot the Discovery Health series, we had to make, we could make mayonnaise healthy, <laughs> honestly. Um, I, I'm not trying to go in that direction on you. I'm just trying to say, uh, different stuff is good. Change is good. We just talked about change over here at the end of the conversation with, with Matt and Paul, right? Having something not the same all the time is, uh, is a good thing. Don't eat the same stuff. If it's Tuesday night, we're having meatloaf, that shit's got to change, folks. You just can't, you just can't do that. So my pan is pretty hot and here's what we're going to do. How, are you tethered? Uh, Can you come over? I'm a little more tethered than I was before. But we have the, we have the, this, we have this, right? Yep. The uh, GoPro cam, the GoPro kitchen cam. Can I see that? It's pretty dark, but you're going to watch what we're going to do. That so is- now I'm going to take these slices of tofu and just put them on here on the diagonal, right? Just like this. That's beautiful. So did you see the pan? I'll show you the pan. The grill pan, right? Right there. I'm using the grill pan. You got to get one of these things. I'm telling you. The crap weather is coming up. You're not going to want to go outside all the time. And you can make anything look amazing inside that you could outside. 
But the tofu thing, just let me finish that. It's a different texture. It's a different flavor. It's not the same thing. It's not fatty. It's healthy. It's really decent for you as opposed to some of the things. And I used to have people do this. Uh, I would say this about uh, portobello mushrooms. They'd be like, whoa, you know, those portobello mushrooms, they taste just like a steak. And I would say, so have a fucking steak. <laughs> You're eating a mushroom instead of a steak. Don't do that. But now a, a, a portobello mushroom in a burger is an amazing thing. Change. Don't. I, I say this all the time. I don't want to be in my deathbed and finally eat a piece of tofu and go, oh my God, I've been missing this my entire life. How much tofu I could have eaten now? Forget it. Try stuff. If you don't like it, then you don't like it, but try it. And I think you'll like it this way. You could do this in a flat pan, like this griddle right here. You don't need the ridges, but I'm telling you, what the ridges do that you'll notice when I flip it over is it gives it those little burn marks. And the more of those little burn marks you get, the crispier the whole thing turns. That's what you're going for. All right, so let me just put a little bit more of the chili oil and the sesame oil, I mean the other way around just on top of this so it's there when I turn it. All right, uh, I have just a couple of things that are going to go on top of this. This is pretty simple and one of the interesting things about tofu is it really does not have a lot of flavor. So what you give it is what it's gonna taste like. This is gonna taste like sesame chili oil when I'm done, but we wanna enhance that a little bit. So two things that I'm gonna use I'm gonna use some of these little red jalapenos that came off my, my uh, vertical earth garden. Where's the Judd picture? <laughs> Judd, check this out. These are coming from my own vertical earth garden in the backyard. <laughs> I didn't come to your house and get these. these. These are mine. I didn't invent them, but they were grown in my backyard. Dude, Sam? Yeah? Don't be a Judd, dude. Uh, don't be a Judd. <laughs> exactly, okay, green onions. I'm a huge, I'm a huge uh, green onion fan, right? So these I just like to cut to make my chopping of them just a little bit quicker. And I've got a chef right there staring at me. I know, me. I was going to say, how do you feel about these two guys still hanging out? You know what I feel like? I feel like a... a Freaking singer on stupid X Factor. X Factor, yeah. And that's Simon fucking Cowell. All right, so I'm <laughs> going to turn of them. I'm going to turn. They're both still off. Can't they get the hell out? <laughs> Just let me turn these guys. Why do they have to watch me? I'm gonna pee my pants in a minute. <laughs> so. Can you hear me? Yeah. Guy. Fieri. Oh, we got to talk Guy Fieri. Let's okay. just, let me just wait, let me just give the title of this article. Yeah. Guy Fieri accused of harassing women, disliking gays. Yeah, just let that sit there for a second. Now, just let me say that I've done enough reading about this topic. So this is an ex-producer of Guy Fieri's show. That no, 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 no. This is the creator of DDD. Okay, but he was also the producer of the show, and now apparently the show's been taken away from him. So Food Network or somebody else is producing it. So technically, you could say this guy has a grudge, right? Yeah, I guess. I think you could say the guy has a grudge, and that's what it sounds a little bit like to me. But it's come out, when you read the story or read the article, or show the pictures at least of Guy. And by the way, just let me say, before we all forget, this Sunday at 5.30 and 7 o'clock, my Halloween show, and I'm three personalities. Guy Fieri is one of them, Martha Stewart and Paula <laughs> Dean. Yeah. Just let that sink into your head and let me tell you something. If you think you're going to turn on and see an attract, oh my god. Alright, I want to flip these. Okay, so are you ready? I just want to yeah. read a part of this Wait, article. Wait, hold on, hold on, I just need Steve. Let me just, I want to flip, I got to do this close to Steve because he can't. I'm ready. Okay, hold on. Watch, let me flip these and I'm going to show you what I'm going for here. Uh, people, I'm telling you, if you have some aversion oh, to tofu, wow. you're blowing it. Look how nice that is. And smoky, right? You're right, Max. Don't have an aversion. I know Kelly's coughing a little bit because of the chili oil, but it's going to be great. Okay, let her rip. Fieri also needed protection from homosexuals, or at least advance warning. Early in the show's run, Paige got a phone call from Fieri, who just walked out of a restaurant in a huff. 
Guy had decided that the two men running the restaurant were life partners, Paige remembers. He said, you can't send me to talk to gay people without warning. Those people weird me out. <laughs> See, so is that, I mean, look, I'm ch look at, you know, I make fun of Guy Fieri as often as I can. All I have to say is, if you watched part of this show from, you know, week to week, you could think that I did not like Asians. <laughs> Am I right? Am I right? Poor Lynn's standing over here. And wow. I think it's because people think that I, I, don't, I mean. Listen to you defending guy. <laughs> I, I'm not, but I just, I just want to make sure that if he's really right. as big a douchebag as they're saying. It's not taken out of context. I want it to be, I want to be legitimate. Whoever could have guessed that the guy with a racing stripe on his refrigerator would be a complete douche. Right. That's the funny, <laughs> that's the funny line in there, right? <laughs> It could be some bitter. Yeah, yeah I, th I mean, I think there's a little bad blood there, but right, obviously. But it is what it is. But yeah, so apparently he's not he's not partial to Jews. He's a complete sexist. One of the articles that I read about him said this. It said that the editors editing the show had to be uh, told watch his line of sight because when he was interviewing a woman, his eyes were always on the breasts. Oh jeez. And it was really, really obvious at times, and they wanted to make sure that that didn't show up in the show. Because it's Food Network. They don't want to sh show that stuff, right? Okay, so just to go to Facebook real quick. Yeah. Kara Schneider is giving us shit. She says, crap weather in CA? What will it be, 50 degrees out? Ha. Huh. Guess what, Kara? It's 60 degrees. Who's saying, oh, yeah. <laughs> uh, oh, wait, shit. i got to just turn this once more. Okay, that's almost done. I'm not necessarily saying we're getting crap weather here, but it has been a little colder, I have to say. Okay, so look at I've got this. I've got some of this, uh, these red jalapenos cut. I've got the green onions cut, and then I need two things for a little sauce, and we're there. And here's what they're gonna be. Three things for a little sauce. They're gonna be hoisin. Damn it, where's all my stuff? Hoisin sauce, basically like Asian barbecue sauce, right? Uh, chili sauce. Damn it. Watch this. Thick, beautiful, rich. Who doesn't like that? A little, a little, geez, Steve. Oh, okay. <laughs> a little chili sauce in here. This right? hasn't been a normal live cast. And a little soy. So these things we're going to mix together. Mary Shirley. She says she ate at a Triple D place in Albuquerque, New Mexico, and the owner told us Guy Fieri was an ass. Was? That's, yeah. No, she said Guy Fieri, the guy said Guy Fieri was an ass. Yes. When he was there for the show, yeah. Do I have an Asian looking plate I can put this on? <laughs> Lynn, I didn't, why does everybody laugh and look at Lynn? <laughs> it's not fair. Here we go, we'll use this. <laughs> Let me do this. And both sides, hopefully, top and bottom, are beautiful as they are. Turn that off, get rid of that. When that stops smoking, I can turn off that stupid fan. I hate the fan. A little oh, of this. Oh, yeah. That looks so good. Lots of green onion. And then these little red jalapenos on there. Who am I? I can't do it. I Mom is talking it. shit on the tofu, Dad. Hey, wait. Can you hear I'm anything sorry. I'm saying? I got I gotta stop the frickin' fan. I can't stand the fan. It pisses the hell off. Look at that. Look how pretty that is. And now all we need is a bite. And then we're done. Clean this stuff. Steve, come over here where it's all nice and clean. Let's go to a clean part of the kitchen. So you want to get a little bit of everything in here. But what you've got now is you've got the soft inside of the tofu, this crispy ness up on the top. And it's Gorgeous, and then just a little bit of this, you know, the hoisin deal with the thing and the stuff, and it's gonna be hot. See it? The deal and the hot. stuff. <laughs> it's gonna. Be hot. I went to the supermarket yesterday, and some guy on the way, and he said, "I'm a cooking guy." I go, "Hey," he goes, "Hey, how come you always put hot stuff in your mouth?" I'm not that bright, man. <laughs> mm. Oh my God. How is it? Mm. Tell us. Watch this. Let me. See. Yeah, yeah, bring the chefs in guys, for the bite. Why don't you guys come over here and try it? Okay, here. Some pros in here. 
Let me feed my boy here first. <laughs> okay. Come on, boys. Come over here. Oh, wow. No, it's the, the flavor profile. It's not deep enough. It's mm. not intense enough. There's only three things in this. It can't nearly be. I'm so, I hate this. <laughs> look at him. He's all, look at all, listen to all the justification. as I talk. <laughs> <laughs> this is awful. Hey, this is great. Yeah, you guys are pieces of shit. I hate your guts. It's good. Thank you for being here today. Thank you. Thank you for being here today. All right, from me and from uh, Paul and Matt, who I'll never speak to again after tonight. Uh, thanks for being here. And uh, tomorrow night, we got a whole lot of shit that we never got to tonight because we talked way really long. But that's good. Live tomorrow night, right here. Looking forward to having you guys here. And we're going to debut the commercial tomorrow night. Steve? All right. Yes, you won't be here. Oh, we can't do it without you. Sure. No, we can't. Can okay. we? Okay. We'll think about it. Maybe we will. Maybe we'll pretend that we didn't, but we really will. <laughs> anyway, tomorrow night, 6 o'clock. Thanks for being here. See you guys.